Okay, we will be now be looking at physiology of sleep. Hope you already saw the video on EEG because you'll need that to understand the charts which we'll be putting up. And the charts, the attributions are there in the description. The notes will be available on Facebook. Subscribe, like and comment. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we'll get back to the lesson proper. Now what's sleep? Sleep is a physiological process of rest to both the body and mind. So this much everybody is knowing. Now uh, we'll get more deep into it in physiology. Normal requirement of sleep. How much does a person require? So how much sleep does a person require? It depends upon the age of that person. If it's a children, so let's say it's a newborn children. So that's what we call infants. They require 18 to 20 hours of sleep. So 20 hours they'll be sleeping and in the rest 4 hours they'll create all types of things. So infants require 18 to. Now growing children that's adolescents and from infants if we take that they'll require around 12 to 14 hours growing children adults they require an average of 6 to 8 hours of sleep and as people get old so 50 plus or 60 plus around 5 to 7 hours is how much sleep that they require okay old people when we clear all this you now know the requirement we'll look at the physiological changes which happens when a sleep takes Please. So when we take, talk about the physiological changes, we have to talk about all particular systems involved starting from the head to the external skin all that. Now if we have to go head wise, first there is of course brain. Brain activities are measured by EEG which I'll be taking up in the end we have charts we'll be looking at the different stages of sleep and different type of electrical activities that we see in the brain then we have skin so sweat sweat is increased you have increased amount of sweat then you have lacrimation lacrimation is decreased okay why is lacrimation decreased because when you're sleeping you don't open your eyes much that means there is nothing to keep it there is no necessity to keep it moist let it dry up so amount of lacrimation also has decreased okay now imagine your tear glands are producing the tears and there is no way for it to get evaporated or dried up then you would start crying in your sleep that epiphora and all those things would happen so toward that we have cvs there is decrease in heart rate there is decreased in bp Heart rate, it lands to somewhere around 60 BPM. So around this would be your range. I'm just giving out the round figure. And BP, it falls to somewhere around 19 to 110 millimeter of mercury. Okay. Now, in case you're having an exciting dream, there will be a sympathetic stimulation making the BP go to 130. Same case for heart rate. If the person has a nightmare, the heart rate might shoot up. But in case it's a peaceful sleep, all of them decreases. Even the respiratory rate decreases. But then again, respiration is not regular. There might be development of Cheney Stokes breathing. Now what's Cheney Stokes breathing? You guys should know. If not, uh, I'll explain it briefly. It's basically an irregular type of breathing in which there is a variable frequency. Then there will be an increase in amplitude followed by a phase of apnea where breathing stops momentarily and again the breathing builds up. Uh, one more variant of irregular breathing is Kussmaul's breathing where the breathing is irregular. Okay. So chain stocks breathing, read about it properly. It's a very important question in case of diabetic ketoacidosis also it's seen so you should know about it. But in case of sleep, respiratory rate decreases and it there may be development of chain stocks breathing and respiratory rate is irregular when you are sleeping. Now in excretory system, the amount of urine production decreases and the concentration of urine increases. Now decrease of urine volume and decrease increase in concentration may be attributed to loss of blood volume by sweating. It may be attributed to that but it is true you have increased amount of sweating when you're sleeping and you have decreased amount of urine formation so they can be correlated 
and you don't have increased amount of volume input so you don't drink water when you're sleeping so it's a compensatory mechanism the amount of urine produced is also decreased proportionally and muscle tones also decrease except for eye muscles which is also termed as sleep paralysis and reflexes one of the important thing when we talk about this is when you are talking about the cns there are reflexes the main reflex is babinski babinski re reflex is nothing but you take a nail or some sharp object and you run it over the outer aspect of the sole so if this is the leg okay you run it over here now what does it lead to if it leads to fanning that is stretching of the toes it's positive and if it leads to curling of the toes it's negative when is the positive seen it's only seen in sleeping in case of adults and some case of myelin disorders positive is seen in myelin disorders and in children because children the myelin formation starts after birth okay so even when children are awake if you do a babinski test you will get the babinski sign to be positive because myelin has not yet developed and similarly you will get positive babinski test in case of myelin disorders because again myelin is not present there and in case of sleeping also even though myelin is normal even though the person is an adult you will be getting positive babinski test so this much we completed this was all the introduction now we will go to the exact sleep physiology sleep is divided into two you have nrem and you have rem sleep em is eye movement rapid eye movement and non rapid eye movement sleep now nrem constitutes your 70 to 80% of your sleep and is peaceful rem only constitutes 20 to 30% of your sleep time and here you see rapid eye movement okay now though sleep is supposed to be peaceful and a process of rest you are seeing rapid eye movement so this is called paradox sleep okay rem is also known as paradox sleep because of the rapid eye movement now when you look at your respiratory rate heart rate and bp in case of nrem these are all stable but in case of rem they can fluctuate why because rem is the place where dreams occur and memory consolidation occurs now we already discussed that dreams are capable of stimulating your heart rate your respiratory rate and bp again that's how you can correlate with now memory consolidation occurs only in rem now what is the implication to you as a student do not cut down on your sleeping time why because when you start sleeping okay you enter nrem stage now on an average nrem stage has to be there for 2 to 3 hours before you actually enter REM this is where your consolidation occurs memory consolidation that's where memory goes the facts the information you have goes from your temporary memory to your permanent memory okay so if you don't get 2 to 3 hours of sleep you are not going to enter REM stage so power naps are practically useless imagine you're studying a subject and you say that okay i'll rest for a bit let's say 30 minutes you take a nap for 30 minutes and then you come back to studying how is that going to help you didn't even reach rem stage you were just in your nrem you never went into rem rem is where your memory goes into action that's where your memory becomes permanent if you don't reach rem how will you remember so that's one of the applications you can think of while you're preparing next have a good 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours sleep have 2 to 3 cycles of rem good for you yeah <clears throat> now and we one more thing we will discuss finally is the neurotransmitter so again anything happening in your brain is a biochemical activity even though the electrical production that we are seeing are also a biochemical activity caused by the flow of ions ions are nothing but again chemicals so the neurotransmitter responsible for nrem is serotonin also 5ht3 this is how you can write serotonin and what's responsible for rem is noradrenaline 
you can correlate also in the same way adrenaline is an action hormone you see it in case of sympathetic stimulation that is flight or fight response fighting any energy consuming activity you have adrenaline so noradrenaline is relieved with uh, related to rem in such a manner so that's how you can remember it yeah so we completed neurotransmitter we completed sleep types then we'll go to the sleep pathway now before that we need to know where they occur okay where does the sleep occur now nrem the center for nrem is rafe nucleus where did we see the rafe nucleus rafe nucleus was seen in the analgesic system there's a video about the analgesic system it has it is related to the pain physiology go see it it's an interesting one you require it anywhere and this is responsible for and again the neurotransmitter 5 ht3 rem is related to which nucleus which part of the brain locus ceruleus of pons neurotransmitter noradrenaline okay so nrem rafe nucleus related to analgesic system go see it it's a good video go see it 5 ht3 rem locus ceruleus pons noradrenaline now the sleep pathway so the person initially is at a relaxed state what type of waves do we get in relaxed state we get alpha type of waves if you want to know what are alpha type of waves how they behave go check out the eeg video it's really informative you'll need it to understand it because now we are going to go to charts and you'll need it pause the video go watch it come back and continue you'll need to know the information of eeg go revise you should know so first the person is having alpha wave he is relaxed then he starts feeling drowsy that is stage 1 stage 1 of sleep so again we are talking about nrem these are the stages of nrem sleep the nrem sleep is divided into four stages stage 1 2 3 and 4 so the person is relaxed he goes to stage 1 that is drowsiness okay here you have A chart like this. So concentrate on this area. The other thing is not required. This is the EEG. Here you have what we have. Let's take this segment. You have low amplitude and irregular waves. Okay, low amplitude and occasionally you are supposed to see a few delta waves. But okay, in this. case it's not visible so low amplitude irregular waves are seen otherwise we would be seeing what alpha waves which loses which desynchronize which have alpha block on stimulation that's opening of eyes to see that chart you have to watch the other video okay so in stage 1 that is drowsiness in stage 1 drowsiness you have low amplitude irregular with few delta waves which are not seen here but okay now then the person moves on to stage 2 here we see these things what are these things these things are spindle bursts okay uh, to understand spindle burst you should know what a spindle is you know smooth muscle fibers right spindle is nothing but this shape this is what you call a spindle to explain lehman's term so when we look at this these are also in that shape see you can draw a type of oval around it these are spindle bursts you see occasional spindle bursts again spindle 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 yeah so in stage 2 of sleep which is called stage 2 is light sleep when having light sleep you'll see these things spindle bursts characteristic of light sleep and you will have delta waves here you will have more amount of delta waves but the delta waves are low voltage now can you see delta waves one is here again you can see this is yeah this is a very prominent delta wave you can see the wavelength it's a big wavelength which means it has low frequency and it has very good amplitude so we see delta waves as well so that was stage 2 you have light sleep characteristic feature are spindle bursts with mixed delta waves 
now then we proceed to stage 3 what stage 3 stage 3 is medium sleep okay so drowsiness light sleep medium sleep and deep sleep so now we are at medium sleep now what do you see in medium sleep the spindle bursts disappear okay so no spindle bursts no spindles and again you have delta waves delta waves again but delta waves are mixed with other types of waves okay we have delta waves which are not so prominent okay with a frequency of 1 to 2 this will be the frequency and they are mixed with other types of waves and then when you enter the final that is the deep sleep you have prominent delta waves and you can see how prominent the delta waves are you can just keep on marking the number of delta waves here so many delta waves so many delta waves beautifully arranged more prominent delta waves okay that's it you finished physiology of sleep and after this the person proceeds to REM sleep okay uh, people don't usually ask questions about EEG of REM they just care about the physiology of sleep again um, the REM will be looking more like this only so again we'll just go over the ECG one EEG ones okay this is one low frequency waves okay then on two you have spindle bursts and a few delta waves finally in stage three the spindle bursts disappear and you have delta waves mixed with other types of waves and finally you have delta waves prominent 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 delta waves everywhere delta waves okay thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something that's important the notes will be available in the facebook group there's a link in the description below we'll be updating mcqs there please go check it out okay i'll see you in my next video bye